All right, quick talk on armbar setup and some cues and some thoughts on how to get a little bit more out of what we're trying to accomplish with arm bars. Arm bars are great for shoulder mobility, uh, core connection. So feeling your obliques and then a piece of that shoulder mobility is obviously your obliques. Uh, they communicate really well with your intercostals, the muscles that kind of wrap around the, the rib cage and the, the serratus, which is going to kind of connect uh, your rib cage to your shoulder blade a little bit more for everything push, pull, upper body oriented. Um, so number one, and, and this kind of applies to your dumbbell work, anything upper body oriented, mostly pushing exercises or anything, even any core work where your hands are on the ground, right? We talk about foot contacts a lot, but the way that you hold a kettlebell or a dumbbell um, and where the pressure is on your hand can help you connect to those dots we were just talking about. If you can put the the pressure in a certain part on your palm, kind of like we talk about heel pressure, ball, the big toe pressure, things like that, you can connect with certain ranges of motion of your shoulder blade. And if we're trying to emphasize the serratus, like a lot of times we need to because of our shoulder blade posture with a lot of sitting and not a lot of movement in our scats, um, it can really pay dividends for all of your upper body ac activity and just feeling stronger and more mobile. And like you can connect right? That mind muscle connection that we talk about. So we talk about foot contacts. You guys have heard me talk about the pisiform. It's this little wiggly bone at the bottom of the wrist right here. And that is kind of like almost our, our heel pressure. And, and we, when we're setting up for arm bars, like I said, or any, any dumbbell lifting, you almost want the, the bell uh, to go across the hand at a diagonal. So we want it to kind of sit in the pocket underneath the, the ball of the, the, pointer finger and then it goes across to the base and sits on the pisiform okay so what it looks like is i'm going to and this is kind of an awkward position to do it but i'm going to grab it here and i'm going to kind of stick the the arch of my hand into that and then i'm going to hit the angle just like this so if i if i take my hand if i'm holding it like this first of all we we never want to have a broken wrist when we're doing arm bars if we're really trying to get into the serratus and have balanced shoulder mobility so we want to take our our knuckles and we want to act like we're going to scrape them on the ceiling so i'm going to drive the knuckles through like this and what that does is that actually allows the bell to sit and put some pressure on that pisiform it's just sitting in the pocket i don't even have to grip it very hard it just kind of sits just like this yeah it's kind of at an angle and if you find your same your dumbbell exercise, if you find that same angle and can kind of push from the pisiform, it's going to help you connect a little bit more with the elbow motion that feeds you into that serratus. So almost that reaching that we talk about, because you're essentially reaching with the pinky, reaching with the elbow. And you notice how that kind of follows this pattern, similar to our landmine shoulder press, things like that. So that's number one where you're setting up for your arm bar. And then I'm just going to take you through some general ideas when we're setting up. This really is is usable in all types of arm bars, but I'm just going to show you a standard rolling arm bar to show you how, how we set up. And then if you, how you can use it to connect a little bit better to your abs, uh, your serratus, your core, and also really open up some rotation in your rib cage. If you got some tight traps, I know a lot of you have some trigger points between your shoulder blades, your lats feel tight. If you set up right and you just get some really good relaxed rolls with the stack and your breathing, should loosen that stuff up really well uh, in a matter of sets, you know, honestly, just a couple. So um, I'm going to set up kind of in our hook line position that we talk about. And I want to get really long and tall in my, in my position. So I want to feel my foot contacts on the ground, make sure I can feel my PSIS. And then once I find those two things, I kind of want to get my spine nice and tall. So I want to make sure I feel length in my spine, like I'm getting my height measured. And I want to make sure that my the crown of my head is kind of reaching long like this. And then some for some of you right there, you might go ahead and you might already start to feel your your side abs, your obliques engage. That's why we do so much oblique focus is because if you get in the right position, if you're used to feeling them, they kind of turn on. It's telling you that you're pretty close to your stack. But if you feel as though your ribs are flared, like even now, mine are, even though I kind of feel my obliques, it's okay to kind of Treat this like a little bit of a hook line uh, breathing drill position. So inhale through your nose, nice and soft, relax, kind of melt into the ground. Long, slow exhale. Reach your fingertips towards the ceiling. Get the serratus to engage on both sides. And then when that happens, when the serratus engages, your rib cage kind of sinks. And that, that, that flare starts to naturally depress and line up with the pelvis in a way that turns on your obliques. 
and helps you find that stat. So after a couple relaxing breaths to really get that, that rib cage to start moving, you can purse your lips and create a little bit of that straw pressure, breathing through a straw. And that alone will line me up. And now I've definitely got my, um, my obliques. Now I want to get, make sure I've got a good reach so that my serratus is going to work with that, but I don't want to do it so far that my shoulder rolls off the ground and I go right into my trap. A good reach is just a soft press away from the ground so that the oblique that we have connects with the ribs and the serratus. And you should be able to reach up and feel that your trap is soft at the top here. So nice, slow exhale, reaching when I exhale. And if I've got all that connected, now I can just start to, to do my position. If I'm oblique, I might be here. Or if I'm just going to do a standard rolling arm bar, I'll straighten my leg just like this and lift the other one. Now, holding this position, the goal of this exercise is to keep this reach position the whole time and then just roll and breathe while you're doing it. So I'm going to inhale through my nose. And then as I start to exhale, I'm going to initiate the exhale. And then I'm going to start by driving my knee a little bit up towards my nose and then across my body. And then as I roll, I'm pushing my fingertips, my knuckles towards the ceiling. Remember, I don't want to have a broken wrist, so I'm driving through like this. And that helps me stay connected to my serratus enough to where I don't feel any trap at the top. And then over on the side here, I should still feel my obliques. I shouldn't feel like I'm arching my back. I should feel that cylinder. If you feel like the leg moving all the way over like this is putting an arch in your back, you can set a foam roller underneath your leg here or a couple pads just to make sure you can stay stacked. And once you get used to the obliques, you can keep it going all the way just like this. And I like to pattern my breathing when – by inhaling when I'm when I'm holding, exhaling when I'm moving, inhaling when I'm holding, exhaling when I'm moving. Just like that. And if you're rolling through, inhale, you want to just do one breath, exhale, roll back, inhale. So you can just do one breath there. Now, another thing you want to think about is making sure that you have a good connection with the serratus enough to where you don't have to overly reach and overly contract because we want the rib cage to be mobile. We don't want to treat this. We don't want to treat this like a drill where we're looking for maximum tension. This is a good stacking and mobility drill because we're trying to get the ribs to be moving with our ribs. So you don't want to think I'm bracing my core. I'm tightening everything. We want the obliques to be on, but you shouldn't also feel your six pack. So one thing that we think about bracing too much, we end up crunching the spine like this. And then you're probably going to feel your traps a little bit more active during this. And that's not going to open the shoulder blades up as much as we want to, because we're going to have six pack here, pulling the rib cage down. We're going to have traps on and now we're not getting that rotation that we want. So it's really important that you kind of really, really think about getting that reach, finding those obliques and then letting things just smoothly roll. And I'll show you from the side, just like this, a little bit better angle here, but I'm, Finding that stack, nice reach, drive the knee up, just like that. You want to keep this reach the whole time. So as I'm falling and I'm rolling back nice and slow, I'm still very much in control with my obliques and I'm still reaching. You notice my fingertip on my left hand, I'm reaching up towards the ceiling while I'm falling back. So even though I just have a soft reach, my shoulder blade is not resting on the ground. And every time I return down, I don't drop back into that position and have to re reset that every single time. Boom. Boom. Now, last but not least is the rotation of your hand while you're doing this. When you're laying on the ground, your thumb is across your sternum in kind of an internally rotated position. That's going to really help you find your serratus. And then as you're rolling, as you roll away and we go to this side position, your thumb goes up over your head into an externally rotated position. That's going to help you maintain that serratus position, but also start to work some good range of motion with your shoulder blades. So it's going to look just like this. And I, I'll, I'll hold the kettlebell. It'll probably be better for you to see it that way. But I start in this internally rotated position and I've unshrugged nice and slow. <sighs> Exhale, find everything. And then the thumb is pointing towards you right now across my sternum. And then as I come across, <sighs> thumb goes up. Shoulder blade is kind of reaching down a little bit to make sure I'm maintaining that a little bit of lat, a little bit of serratus, a little bit of oblique here. So I got don't have very much, um, no, not much uh, extension in my low back. 
And then as I roll back, I just turn right back to thumb across the sternum like this. Exhale. Inhale. You should feel, you should have a good enough connection with your core to where you feel pretty stacked and you don't feel like your rib cage and your pelvis are disconnected. And if that is the case, you're not overly bracing, but your soft inhales should offer enough rotation and almost a unilateral or, or one side twisting of the rib cage in a way that you might get some cracks, some pops, um, and some loosening of your traps while you're doing this. So we really want to keep those traps off the whole time and being connected to your serratus is really important. So I wouldn't go super heavy with your kettlebell choice. This, this exercise is really more about full body connection. And then once you nail that connection, once you can just lay down and you feel things, you feel PSIS, obliques are on. Then we start using this as a, as a shoulder integrity and, and strength within that new range of motion exercise where we can grab a 50. And you can really work on this. And you can think about, you know, as we get up into these these uh, these get up style arm bar positions here, where we start increasing the range of motion from the ground up. Now you're building shoulder strength along with scapula strength, connection to your serratus, and we start to to ramp those things up. But just going heavier arbitrarily without knowing that you feel really comfortable with that connection you might fall into some older patterns. So I hope that's really helpful, guys. If you have any questions, just shoot me a, a DM in WhatsApp. I don't mind sending you more videos for something more specific for your program. Y'all have a great day.